Welcome back everyone, I'm Seth Roth, and today we are finally diving into the Spell Mod Arcanum. This is a fantastic spell mod that I have enjoyed digging into very much because the spells are really designed to work alongside each other, even across schools. Uh, you'll see what I mean uh, when we get into the deeper dives, uh, going into the spells of different schools and their combinations. For now, we're going to hit the top three spells of each school. Um, they're master level spells that are about as overpowered as you can get. Uh, they're super fun. So I have inserted a number of uh, hostile AI into the game, and hopefully when I turn and wake them all up, they don't all attack me at once, which is what just happened during my previous attempt at this. Perfect. Okay, I have sequestered three groups of... Uh, semi-loyal subjects that are going to be donating their lives and existences to helping us show off what some of these spells can do. So the first spell I want to start off with, we're going to do Destruction first. This is called Soul Invictus. This summons a blazing sun for 30 seconds, dealing 50 fire damage per second and reducing fire resist by 50% in a 40 foot area. Sunburn enemies take 60 damage over 10 seconds when hit by a fire spell. Upon expiring, the sun explodes, dealing 100 to 160 fire damage to enemies based on distance. So this spell, like I was just talking about, is meant to not only do a lot of damage, but since it lowers the enemy's fire resist, it's meant to be used side by side with another fire spell. So we're going to go ahead and toss in Inferno Jet, because I'm in god mode for testing anyway, and Magicka is not a thing. But, oh jeez, and this one reduces the target's armor as well. Fantastic! Alright, so we're going to dive in and show you guys what this is all about. Alright, so we start off with Soul Invictus. Oh yeah, that's funny. Last time they didn't, uh... Last time they were strong enough to survive a single shot. Weird. Okay, must have spawned different levels of bandits. So, as you can see, this is a stationary mini sun. It does damage every round for 30 seconds. Every second for 30 seconds. And then after that 30 second sequence, it, it has a lovely finale. But during this time, it actually limits fire resist. So that, there you go, oh yeah, there's the finale. Boom shakala cat. So this is actually a spell that ironically enough would fit really well with a frost spell. So if you can freeze or somehow immobilize or paralyze your opponents within the blast of Soul Invictus, uh, you can maximize the damage of that spell. By using that effect. If you use it on, on its own without anything to slow down opponents, you'd probably end up running in a circle like this just to keep them close so you can take advantage of that damage over time and that lowering of the enemy's fire resistance so that you can have your have your fun. Next we're going to jump into Soul of Winter. This is a two-handed spell so we won't be able to mix this like we did the last one. For 60 seconds, create a frost storm around yourself that grows in power and area every 6 seconds, or whenever you cast a frost spell for the first time every 6 seconds. The storm gains 18 bonus damage per second, and its radius increases by 10 feet with every stack, up to 6 times. At full power, enemies in the area lose 30% frost resistance, so this, if you're fighting Nord bandits, this will still chew through their frost, most of their frost resistance. Alright, so with Soul of Winter, you actually cast that before you get into combat, and then we'll do uh, Glacial Ray uh, when we get into combat. So that's, that's another fun one I'll show you. Glacial Ray is a beam of cold energy that deals 62 frost damage per second and leaves icy barricades that block movement. So it's a combination of both barrier and damage over time. Now I believe I parked another group of hostiles somewhere around here. Hopefully they didn't want to drop out. There they are. Alright, so, best way to start this. Alright, so this is our mini frost storm. And we've got, every six seconds we cast a spell and it'll get bigger. Once we get close enough to bring in some friends. There we go. Alright. So Glacial Ray is technically a channeling spell, but I'm going to break it up into individual spells because after six you fully enhance your storm. I mean, just look at this. Look at the range on this thing. Ah, oh, I love it. You really feel that... Like, the, the Blizzard spell is all well and, night, well and good, like the master level destruction frost spell for vanilla Skyrim. 
But this just, because you're not taking damage from it yourself, really makes you feel like you're at the center of this vortex. And look how long this lasts. Like, as long as I keep this thing fed, it just stays enhanced for the whole duration of the spell. Ah, yeah, this is a fun one. Especially if you're a frost wizard. That just throws down the frost resist, the damage. It's beautiful. Alright, next we're going to look at Twisting Tempest. Summons a tornado in a 40-foot area for 30 seconds that reduces shock resistance by 20% and drags units caught tor in towards the center. Units in the storm have a 60% chance to be socked for 60 damage, plus 6% of their current health, so it actually does more damage the healthier they are uh, as shock damage when they're, hit, when they're hit by another shock spell. My mistake. So this is actually meant to be uh, combined. We're going to combine Twisting Tempest with Unstable Current. This is a cheaper version of Chain Lightning that you channel. channel. And I believe I have another group of loyal volunteers sequestered over here in the woods. I had to make them very far away from each other or they all attacked me. <laughs> Ended up with 10 on 1. It was uh, fun times. Alright, where, where are you? Here we go. There you go. So you want to keep them within 30 feet of the tornado because it will keep pulling them in if they're close enough. And it also increases their weakness to shock damage. So what I really like about these Apocalypse Master spells is not only are they massive, or not only are they huge, not only do they do a lot of damage, but they also increase the, the vulnerability of the target to that chosen element, right? So in, in all of these cases, when you actually get into combat, you're meant to be whipping out your other primary damage spells of that element so that you can capitalize on it and raise as much damage as possible, which I think is a really nice touch. That was very cool. Alright, now, due to some experimentations beforehand, I ended up fighting a lot of NPCs around this corner, assuming the bodies haven't disappeared. I cannot see the bodies now, so they may have disappeared. Now oh, we've got one, two, three. We're going to show off the Conjuration spells next, and uh, if you haven't figured out for those ones, you it's, it's preferable to have a lovely body count. Oh, I know the... The fire spell. Yeah, where we did Sol Invictus, that's going to be a good spot. Plus, without all the trees in the way, so you can get a better view of what's happening. And down you go. Alright, hopefully these bodies stick around long enough for a demonstration. We're not going to leave this area, so we should be good. Okay, yeah, we got plenty of bodies. Excellent. So, the next spell, we're getting into Conjuration now. This is called Army of Darkness. Let's go ahead and read the description. Reanimates all dead bodies up to level 100 within 100 feet to fight for you for 120 seconds. Allied undead units within the 100 feet summon a skeletal warrior or archer under their control for 60 seconds. So let's see, we should have allied undead, allied undead. So just to test this out, let me do a little tweaking and get some basic I got all of the Arcanium spells, but I didn't get some vanilla spells, so I should have gotten a reanimation spell. Let me get that real quick. Alright, so step one, we're going to go ahead and raise one body. Give the animation a second to kick in, so we've got our corpse. Very good. Alright, now we're going to use Army of Darkness, because I think when you have a summoned undead, it adds in an additional bonus. It doesn't just raise all the corpses around you. And abracadabra. Yeah, okay, so not only does it resurrect, or reanimate, I should say, all the bodies within 100 feet, but the ones that you do have animated, it summons an additional skeleton. So if you're uh, running, for example, my Necromancer playthrough, and you've already got five or six summons running with you side by side, or animated skeletons, uh, you would double the number of skeletons and raise the corpses. So a lot of the Arcanum spells serve two functions with one spell, which I think is really creative. Uh, one of the most frustrating things about Skyrim destruction magic is you've only got the two hands, right? You've got hundreds of spells to choose from, but only the two hands, which really limits your options. But the nice thing about uh, Conjuration, and or with the Arcanum spells, is that the spells do multiple functions, so you can actually have like four spells in two hands, because each spell serves two functions. So I think that was a very clever way to build the mod. All right, so next we're going to use a lovely spell called Conjure Oblivion Gate. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. We're gonna cut down on the, now we should find. 
We're just gonna bring in the horde. Bring in all of our friends. All right, so it's five bandits versus my summoned guys. And here comes the cavalry. You summon a freaking gate of oblivion. And out of that gate pours Daedra fighters. Like once every five to six seconds. The spell will last as long as you are concentrating. Oh geez, we brought in the, band, the giant. Okay, we're not gonna be stopping on this spell until that giant is dead. Okay, we've got four Daedra so far. Five Daedra. Six Daedra. So uh, obviously I'm in god mode, so I can't run out of Magicka. But this is a concentration based spell. So you will be limited by whatever spell cost your Magicka has. But the wonderful thing about this baby is that you have instant reinforcements. You feel like, like if you're doing a warlock type playthrough, you, you feel like you're punching a hole in reality and ripping out Daedra to back you up. I love it. I think that is fantastic. And I like the idea that because it's so powerful, it's concentration based. And it kind of forces you to, it's the best benefit when you already have minions that can fight alongside you, that can distract the bad guys while you're casting the spell, right? Uh, which works great for a death, for a conjuration type character, because usually you've got summons or undead backing you up anyway. So I think that works out really good. Uh, next we have a spell called Unleash Arcan, and the first thing you're going to need for that uh, Unleash Arcan is one of those master level spells that kind of requires you to have uh, the, the perk that allows you to have double summons. I'll show you. So we're going to have our little flame thralls here. Now this works for Arcans of any, or you start with two Atronox, all right? Either Frost, Shock, or Fire, right? You pick an element, and then you can grab your... Then you take your Unleash Arcan spell, point it at the first subject. Oh, that's the wrong wrong hand. Here we go. All right, so we have captured the first Atronach. The upper left corner tells us we've consumed one out of two Atronachs. Now we're going to consume the second Atronach. And you have a big Atronach, an incandescent Arcan. Let's go ahead and test that out. Hopefully I didn't just throw more at her than she can handle, but given that she hurls frickin' fireballs, she seems to be doing just fine. Uh, so, that is, I, I will point out that when you do this Arcan spell, um, she is not permanent, right? You can tell in the upper right corner she lasts about 60 seconds. So that is the one downside to combining your Atronox into one powerful version is that they don't last forever. Whereas my two Flame Atronox would last forever because I've got that Master Perk unloaded. Uh, I do, well, you know what, let's double check. I haven't actually looked. Let's say you got your Conjuration spells, but you don't have, you don't want that double perk, the, the double Conjuration perk. Uh, I'm just curious if you can piecemeal this, right? If you can make one Atronox and then load your Arcan spell halfway, and then make another Arcan, Arcan, Arcan oh, you already have an Arcan summoned, okay, so, anyway. So, based on what I was reading from the spell, it looks like if you don't have the Twin Souls perk, if you can't have two of these boys side by side, it looks like you can still feed the soul, the sp feed it individually, right? So just summon one, feed it, summon another, feed it, and you get your second one. So you don't necessarily have to have the Twin Perk spell Twin Souls perk unlocked, but it does make it a little easier if you've already got the two out side by side, because then you just cast a spell twice and you're good. Alright, wow, that is a massive, massive Atronach. I love it. Alright, moving on to the next one. Alright, next is Reckoning. This is a beam of energy that not only hurts your enemies, but it heals your allies. Since we've already got some summons up, let's give this a test. Oh, it is a master spell, keep that mind. Alright, oh yeah, that's chewing through their health nice and quick. And you can also... Do I have... Did I already lose my... Oh, no, there we are. There we go. You can also heal your, your buddy. She's resisting it because she's at full health. Also, I think you might need a perk before you can actually heal Archons. Uh, or, uh, Atronachs. But, uh, as you can see, this is a lovely spell, particularly if you have allies. 
right? So your ally is already in combat, so you can boop, heal your ally, boop, hurt your enemies, boop, heal your ally, boop, hurt your enemies. Uh, which is, like I said, it serves two functions, right? It's the best of both worlds. You can both heal and hurt with one spell, which considering that this spell takes both hands anyway, helps a lot, right? Because it, it, that's the one thing that can be annoying with these spells. If they take two hands, you're just stuck unleashing one effect and it better be one heck of a powerful effect. But Reckoning definitely qualifies as one of those powerful effects. So that said, I want to dive into Second Chance. For 60 seconds, you gain 75% bonus health and stamina regen. If you would die during this time, instead, you are revived with full health and Second Chance is dispelled. So we're going to... Uh, let's uh, have another, another little party here. After we cast the spell, that would be kind of pointless to jump in without it. So this is a 60 second buff. And, uh, yeah, this won't take long. As you can see, I have died. They have converged on my friend. But wait! Ha ha ha! And we're good. Well, almost good. Now they are upset. Uh, alrighty, let's just, uh, we'll combine Glacial Ray and... Where's my Inferno? Inferno. Yeah, Glacial Ray will be fine. Do, 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 do. There we go. A little bit of a frost demonstration for you. You can build a freaking wall with this glacial ray spell. Very nice. All right, so that was second chance. If you're going up against a really tough boss, you're not sure how you're going to do it. Wow, that's probably the most uncomfortable position to die in that I've ever seen. All right. Ah, there we go. All right, so that was second chance. Highly recommend using that if you're going into more than you can handle or potentially a boss fight. Uh, there are also a couple of perks you can get in Ordinator where when you are about to die, you explode. <laughs> so you do a lot of damage. So with this, you can basically turn yourself into a suicide bomber that gets to come back, which has a lot of tactical options. Uh, it could be a lot of fun to play with. Uh, next, we're going to do Scourge of Thross. This is another restoration spell. This is a plague spell that deals 105 disease damage per second for 7 seconds. Then the target bursts, taking damage equal to 15% of their missing health. They can become immune to it for 7 seconds, but they spread it to nearby units. So in order to get the most uh, use out of that, we're going to combine that with a frost spell that is designed to slow down opponents. So that hopefully will give us some room in which to work here. Alright, so step 1, we make it particularly chilly and slow for them to follow. Step two, we'll bring them around. Step three, unleash the spell. All right, so there you go. <laughs> of course, I forgot to turn off God Mode, as one does. But as you can see, before I died, uh, the spell infects a target. Target explodes. Exploding target infects nearby targets, who then explode. Uh, so it's a great uh, way to use that restoration magic for a combat angle, which I think is a really nice touch. Uh, being able to actually attack with restoration spells, particularly if you are a perk-starved character, you can then just focus on restoration as your primary class school of magic and still be able to fight. And these kind of poison damage spells uh, do carry over uh, just fine. Uh, in that there are some at novice level, apprentice, expert. Like you, you can do damage with the restoration school, courtesy of Arcanum. Scourge of Thross is just one of the best ways that uh, you have to do that because you can you can take out an entire group by just pegging one guy and running away. It's beautiful. All right, next we're going to get into the illusion spells. We're going to start with Ageless Insight. All right, it increases the power of all your spells by 15% for two minutes. While active, casting five spells causes an additional random master spell to be cast. So... <laughs> This spell is basically the Master Spell Lotto. We're going to go ahead and get a nice view of our character in the surrounding area, just in case we get off something particularly explosive. So for two minutes, the fifth spell that you cast will always bring an extra Master Level spell along for the ride. So we're going to go ahead and switch to, let's see, okay, yeah, my character had recently died, so I don't have my other spells. We're going to switch. We're going to use Frost Piercer. This is a, a cheapy that I'm, I'm using. A cheapy, easy one 
just so that when the master spell kicks in, it's easy to tell. So that fifth spell, there we go. We now have, we have unleashed Harmony, which is actually a master level uh, calm spell. And apparently the blast radius on us is huge because the giant over there resisted. And, and I was not intending to hit him. Uh, then we also did, I don't know what spell that was, we exploded with purple mist. Keep in mind my character has a lot of master, all the master spells. And I haven't test, I have not tested all of them for this demo. Oh, that, there was the fifth one right there, it was kind of a glowy, purpley blast shot thing. I don't know what that would have done. So it also includes combat spells, right? Oh, there we go. Okay, that's cool. Is that my frost one? No, I think that's something else. So if we go to our active buffs here, we should be able to find... Oh, Aegis Insight. There we go. Okay, so we randomly spawned Soul of Winter. We created a frost storm around ourselves. It grows in power every six seconds. Whenever you cast a frost spell or for the first time every six seconds. So this should enhance every time we cast. There we go. It's that frost spell again. We also, our fifth spell was Hysteria, which was an attempt to launch a massive frenzy spell, which has ticked off the giant. Lovely. I guess we'll use him for the next demonstration. But as you can see, that frost spell that I master casted is still doing its thing. I've, there's some kind of a massive restoration-based spell that's also joined in. Oh, apparently that one's stationary. <laughs> so basically, if you get this uh, illusion spell, let me check what it's called, Ageless Insight, and then the cheapest spell you can find and just start spamming, you can unlock a random master level spell every five seconds or every six, every five spells that you cast. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Okay, now I've got to get some distance from this guy. I, I need the giants for another demo. Oh, jeez. Okay, give this a minute. It takes two minutes for this spell to wear off. Like, it's beautiful. You can, for two minutes, just randomly chuck out all the master spells you could want. Ah. <sighs> All right, let's see if this spell actually heals or something. I don't even know what it does within this ring. All right, so thankfully giants are slow, which sets us up perfectly for the next demo. Now you noticed I was unleashing mass hysteria, mass calm, plenty of illusion spells, and they were not able to affect these giants. That The spell was not getting through. So the next step is to use a different spell. This one is called Mind's Desire. For 120 seconds, your fear, calm, and frenzy spells have no level restrictions. The downside is they only last 25% as long, which I think is an excellent trade-off. These spells will now work on anything, at least level restriction-wise. If you're dealing with a, a type of monster that's immune, that's another thing. But if it's from a level, that's bye-bye. That's but the spell only lasts 25% as long, so hopefully my Aegis Insight doesn't mess this up by throwing in extra spells. Alright, so there's our Mind's Desire. Now we just need our Mass Frenzy spell, or Fear, Hysteria, there we go. Okay, <laughs> anything up to level 10,000 will flee from combat, so we should be good here. So remember, this spell did, did, it was randomly selected from Aegis Insight, didn't work on the Giants, and now it does. Bye bye, bye bye, <laughs> But it only lasts 25% as long, so you still want to keep your distance, because Again, it only lasts 25% as long, so you don't want to start playing cards next to them thinking everything's fine, because everything well, will not be fine. Let's just um, finish these guys off real quick. Gives me a chance to experiment with some more Glacial Prison Ready. Okay, oh, I think that's actually for my Ordinator perks. Yep. Freeze them in place, we're just going to shoot through them real quick. As you can see, Ageless Insight is still running because it lasts two freaking minutes. And every fifth spell just spits out some a new master level spell. That was a fire type spell. The hard part with some of them is they need to hit an actual target, because it's doing combat spells, right? Ageless Insight was still throwing out combat spells. So uh, it's more diff difficult to test that out without a constant stream of bad guys to hit, but you don't know how long they'll last, because you're doing some massive spells. All right, next we have Mystic Marksmanship. For 120 seconds, your bows deal 25% more damage. Every fifth shot fires out a beacon that raids spectral arrows when it lands. 
dealing 75 damage per second for 8 seconds and reducing armor by 200%. Alright, so this is a two-handed spell. I want to make sure that I've still got my bow. Very good. Alright. This one you don't actually need um, living targets to demonstrate. It's more of a passive buff, but I really like what it does tactically to your archer. Alright, so you've got your archer. You, It's the fifth arrow, right? So you've got your four shots that don't matter. Do, 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 do. Now the fifth shot, though, that one matters. So the fifth shot, you would actually aim at your target. And there you go. So you have a constant barrage of bolts from the sky. Let me just check the description there. I'm not sure if that works outdoors or not. It doesn't say. Okay. So that works. That is the fifth arrow, right? So you can either go into combat contending yourself on the knowledge that your fifth arrow will bring repeated shots, or you can tactically use this and say, you know, use four arrows when you're out of combat, and then save the fifth one for when you first go in, knowing that this for the the area that you hit is going to become a, a living pincushion, right? Uh, so that's a nice thing that they add for archers. There are other spells along those lines for the Arcanum mod, so it does also help archers to a certain extent, uh, as well as thieves. There, there's a lot there, and I only have enough time to cover a handful of the options. But I believe that covers all four schools of magic, and, and that would be everything except there's another. Yes. Not necessarily a school of magic, but another option for manipulating your spells. Uh, this is one of the more creative things I've seen from previous spell mods. It adds another 60 spells to your options. All right, so throughout Skyrim, you're going to find these little bad boys. There is one at the College of Winterhold. There's one at the Alchemist Shack. And I think there's three or four others sprinkled throughout Skyrim. So you go to your Arcane Escritor and you have the option of creating reformulated tomes. Now, if you look at the ingredients, you'll see that the ingredients for these tomes are other spell tomes. So for example, you're combining in this one, uh, Bring to Light, you have a mystic beacon that deals damage to enemies and dispels invisibility. If the target is casting a spell, damage is tripled. The hurting damaged characters that are spell casting comes from Ponder. The damage over time comes from frostbite, so you can literally combine two different spells to unleash a specific effect. Now, you can't just randomly select two tomes and combine them. Obviously, these spells are coded by the modder, but there are so many options. For example, uh, you guys remember... Oh, I just passed it. Where'd it go? There you go. Remember Soul of Winter? I just showed you that spell. You can also combine it with the spell Frozen Maelstrom to create Comet Barrage which is basically icy comets that just come down out of the sky and berate your opponents, right? So not only do you have like 50 or 60 spells in each uh, school of magic, you also have another, what, 60 of these spells that are combinations of all the spells from other schools that allow you to further combine their elements so that one spell is doing two to four different things at the same time which just boggles my mind. Like, going through every one of these spells in Arcanum is going to be at least a month's worth of work because there's so much to work with. But it's going to be so much fun to find out. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. All right, so we're going to go back to our little test area to show you the three reformulated spells that I've selected for the demonstration. And then we'll wrap it up. So we've seen 12 spells so far. Hopefully it's not nighttime yet. Nope, we're good. Uh, let's see, I am using I need, so I should probably feed my character real quick. Okay, and let's see, we need, yeah, I need to hop over here. So I like this little, this angle here gives you a really nice view of the surrounding landscape. It's a nice spot for testing out spells or, I don't know, just feeling like you're a little mini god that rules over the Valley of Whiterun. Alright, so first off, we're going to have a look at... So we're going to need to use the fast menu. Uh, Celestial Purge. That's going to start with a C. All right. The, the difficulty is once you, you're combining spells from different schools, so you have to actually check the icon here to figure out what school it's from so that you can actually get, find the description. Uh, Celestial Purge. 
Concentrate to release Burning Light that deals 55 magic damage per second to undead, vampires, and summoned units. So this is actually... These are anti-undead spells that actually do significant damage to undead. You know, in vanilla, a lot of those spells just kind of make them run away, which is all well and good, but when you're a master level restoration mage, you should be able to overwhelm them. All right, we have a lot of Draugr, and we have our anti... There we go, anti-undead spell. Oh, and this spell works on summons as well, so the Atronach is going bye-bye too. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so these guys might not look like your average Draugr. That is from the Tougher Draugr mod, which is also fantastic. Uh, these guys will have extra frost abilities and fire, depending on their element. Uh, it doesn't make them overpowered, but it does add in a lot more variety to your undead. So there you go. That's your anti-undead beam spell. I love that it has like a flaming, like it's the, almost like a mis mixture between a ray and a fire. Uh, if you let it bend a little bit as it turns it actually looks like holy fire which i think is a very nice touch uh, so celestial purge so that is actually combining two spells i believe it's combining an anti-undead spell and then it's throwing in uh, a fire spell to make it do more damage and that you can get as an apprentice you just need the tomes for it which i can't look up offhand because once you create it you can't create it again so yeah so that's that all right next we have chaos tempest which is a destruction level spell. We're going to want to have a look at that description. All right, summon flaming pillars that deal 125 fire damage and knocks enemies into the air in a 60 foot radius around you, dealing 200% massive damage, damage to massive targets. Enemies hit, leave patches of lava for 20 seconds. Alrighty, so for that one, we're going to summon some more friends. Give ourselves a little bit of room so we can cast this master spell. And away we go. <laughs> so my camera wasn't far enough away to actually see the scope of what we just did. Hopefully with just one victim, we can see it a little clearer. There you go. So it is a pillar of flame that bursts out of the ground, does massive damage, knocks them into the air, and the ground at their feet turns into lava. So that is one of the reformulated spells. It is actually combining two destruction spells. One that leaves lava on the ground, kind of like a wall spell, and one that actually hurls enemies into the air when you hit them with a fire spell. So it's nice that you can you will actually be able to take some of your favorite arcanum spells and reformulate them and combine them into some nasty, nasty stuff. Uh, it, also, I like the fact that the ingredients for these reformulated spells are other spell tomes rather than just finding another spell tome you already know and having nothing to do with it, right? You just sell it. You know, if you can't eat it, you get rid of it. But with Arcanum, you actually start, if you, particularly if you don't know what combinations you're looking for, you start saving up every spell tome so that when you go to that bench to do it, you can then look at what your options are. Uh, so I do like that that basically turns spell tomes into a collector's item that you can use in the future, which is really nice. All right, last we want to try out Supreme Verdict. That's another one of these reformulated spells. Let's have a look here, down to the S. Uh, there we go. All right, a burst of holy energy deals 270 magic damage to all enemies in 40 feet. You gain armor, 225 bonus armor, and 100% bonus attack damage for 30 seconds. You also heal for 15% for 15 health per second for 30 seconds. Summon some friends real quick, get some distance, cast it down. Alright, so this will give me armor, damage, and regen. If I can do this without getting interrupted. Oh, I'm already out of magic. Alright, looks like I might have to actually uh, be in god mode for this. Because I am a glutton for punishment. Alright, we'll just take a little step off to the side here. Bloop. And now they have to come to me. Perfect. Alrighty, let's uh, just lock and load. Give it a second. Three, two, one. There we go. Alright, oodles amounts of damage. At least there should have been. Let's try that again. Please ignore the guy that's glowing. That's actually from my Imperious mod. Oh, somebody died. Alright, so it looks like it's one of those resist 
or die spells. Because, oh no, he's been hurt. Okay. So the damage isn't overwhelming. Because you notice I... No. It's taken three just to uh, deal with these guys. Oh, there's a mage down here too. Uh, but actually, we can go ahead and look up the buff. Supreme Verdict. That's probably going to be at the bottom. There we go. So uh, we've got bonus armor, bonus attack damage, health regen, 15 per second for 30 seconds. And uh, yeah. So as you can see, I'm already fully healed again. And there we go. So you get your explosive restoration spell that still does damage to the people that are near you and you heal and you get armor like it's the best of all three worlds and considering that it's a two-handed spell that's kind of what you hope for oh you're trying to run away they're so cute oh that was that was very nice <laughs> yeah you know the spells are a bit overpowered if it literally blinds your screen when you use them the blast radius is impressive on that thing too he's all the way over there cool all right, so that was 15 spells, most of them master level, from the Arcanum spell mod. Uh, you can be a god of destruction, you can open up gates to oblivion, you can rain down magic arrows from the sky, you can use illusion magic on any target regardless of level. You can heal and hurt at the same time with restoration spells. It is an amazing mod. I highly recommend checking it out. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, let me know if there's a particular school of magic you are interested in, and I will deep dive into that school first, um, depending on which ones are requested the most often. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care.